How can you start an excavating company and make $360,000 a year? Hi, my name is Nate Jones. I run this YouTube channel. I make videos on entrepreneurship and businesses and how you can start them and scale them. If you get value out of today's video, hit like and subscribe. Okay, so we're talking about an excavating company. I'm focusing on more of residential type excavating because it's easier to project your revenue because there's more basis on how much you can make. So we're talking about land clearing, basement digging, creating foundations or prepping the foundations, uh, maybe some potential utility work. But really what today I'm gonna to be focusing on is basements, foundation, and land clearing because as an excavating starting out, I feel like an excavating company starting out, you can really start to focus on those things and start to bring in money right away. So the first thing we need to do when we're starting this business is we need to understand the costs associated with starting it. Um, the biggest thing in this business is the equipment cost. You're gonna need an excavator, you're gonna need a skid steer, you're gonna need a truck and a trailer to bring those to and from a job site, and you're also gonna need probably some random small tools. And I projected that uh, at a pretty conservative number of about $200,000 to buy the, that machinery, the truck and the trailer. So if you don't have 200,000 sitting around, you're gonna to need to, to get a loan for this business, you're gonna to need to put at least 20 to 25% down. So 20% down on a $200,000 loan is $40,000. On a five year note, your monthly payment would be $3,400 a month. And then your insurance is gonna be about $300 a month starting out to ensure your equipment, your general liability, um, and potentially some workers' compensation insurance. So that being said, we know our expenses. Now we're gonna talk through how much we can make and what our net income or profit is gonna be. So let's go into how much we can make. For basements, to dig a basement, uh, the costs were all over the board for this. Um, so I'm gonna use an average number, but the costs were anywhere from $10,000 to dig a basement to $30,000 to dig a basement. So I said, hey, let's put it at the average of $20,000 that you're gonna make for digging a basement. For land grading that just, random on and off jobs that to clear land out or to prep land. It's gonna be anywhere from $1,000 to $3,000. These are for smaller properties. This isn't a large land grading job, but just a smaller prep for like a barn or something like that. So $1,000 to $3,000, I put an average about $2,000 a job for that type of operation. For foundation prep, it looks like it's anywhere from three to $4,000. So you're not making as much because you're not digging a basement, but you're still making a decent amount. So I put an average, just I put it lower end on this just because I, the basements may be overpriced. I don't know, but I'm trying to trying to get a holistic approach here. So that's about $3,000. So $20,000 for a basement, $2,000 to grade land, $3,000 for foundations. So let's go through what would an average month look like for an excavating company starting out. I would say if you can, uh, and I'm gonna tell you how you can get these jobs and how you can make sure that your business is successful here in a second. So go ahead and stick around. And if you get value out of this, hit like and subscribe. So if we do one basement a month and we do two land grading jobs a month and we do three foundations, or I'm sorry, two foundations, that's one basement at $20,000, two land grading jobs, that's 2,000 each at 4,000, two foundations at 3,000 each, that puts us at 6,000. So that month we brought in $30,000 doing one basement, two land grading jobs, and two foundations. That's pretty good because if we were to look up how much hours that takes, I don't think that's more than if we average it out maybe two days a week, maybe three days a week. So you're not working as much and you're making more because you have a skill of being able to operate heavy machinery. So, um, so far a lot of revenue in this business, but let's dial it back to see what the profit is because profit is the only thing that matters in business. Okay, so our loan's gonna be again, 3,400 a month, our insurance is 300 a month, and our gas I put at 3,000 a month. I put 10% of our expenses going to gas. Um, our labor is 4,000 a month. Um, it's a little bit over 10%, that might be a little high, but again, you're gonna need some help if you're wanting to get these jobs done. So that's a, you could probably do it by yourself, which would really add back your profitability, but that's $11,000 in expenses. So that puts your net income, your profit that month at $19,000. That is pretty good when you only paid $40,000 um, for your equipment for your loan. So you know, first month, we're 50% the way to break even. So about two to three months in here, we could break even on this business and start to turn a profit from the down payment that we put in, which is pretty good. 
So on an annual basis, our net income is gonna be $228,000. And then if we subtract our $40,000 down payment for our equipment and our loan, that puts us at $188,000 of profit. That's a gross income, that means top, top, top line, of $360,000. So um, not working that much, you're making $360,000. That's, that's a pretty good business. Um, I always say contracting businesses, you know, I did one on asphalt companies and flooring companies, there's a lot of revenue. And the thing I like about this business is that it's not necessarily too hard on your body, right? If you're doing flooring all day, you're gonna get beat up. But if you're an excavator and a skid steer, it is a little rough, but I think you're gonna be able to have a longevity in that career versus doing flooring. So I love the profitability in this business. So what's the next thing we need to do? We understand our costs, we understand that we can make money. The third thing we need to do, and I do this in every single business that I review and that I business that I have personally started is I think of all the ways it won't work. I always say bankrupt the business, fail the business, make it go out of business before you start the business and understand why it went out of business. Run these scenarios in your head. If you can understand why it didn't work or why it potentially couldn't work, and you create strategies around fixing those potential problems, you're gonna have a holistic approach to starting your business in a way in which you're limiting the downside or the potential failure. So let's go through here. The first thing is you don't get any jobs, right? This up here, I had five jobs that we had to acquire for that month of $19,000 in net income, uh, 30,000 in gross revenue. So we had to get jobs. So how do we get jobs in an excavating company? Well, number one, traditional marketing, which is having a website, having a Facebook page, putting your name out there. But I think the most important thing in this business, because an excavator is a subcontractor, that means there is a general contractor that is trying to find somebody to do this type of work. So usually this is a home builder. Um, this is a general contractor. But usually if you could connect and create a network of home builders and tell them of your new business, tell them that you're gonna be able to show up on time and you network that or work with other excavating companies that maybe have so much work that they just want to sub out a basement to you every now and then. But if you work the network, I feel like networking in this business is the most important thing to being successful because it's not necessarily the homeowner who gets to choose who the excavator is. Primarily, it's never going to be, except for those random land grading jobs. But for foundations and basements, it's gonna be the general contractor or the home builder. So you need to network with those people, find a way to get in contact with them, and um, whoever is in charge of hiring contractors, understand what they're looking for. How can you get on that short list? How can you get these jobs? A lot of times, um, it's gonna require you to have certain insurance. I own an insurance agency. We work with excavating companies all the time, and they wanna make sure that you're legit. So. Uh, Primary thing I would say if you want to get jobs, make sure you're connecting with the right companies and contractors. Number two, your equipment breaks down and you don't know how to fix it. I'm not saying that you're going to be the best mechanic in the world, but what I am saying is you should understand how to fix that equipment um, if there's small little tiny breakdowns, because if not, you're going to be running a mechanic, mechanic shop all the time and it's going to take you forever to get that equipment fixed and it's going to eat into your profitability. Uh, Number three, you can't fulfill jobs. This is what happens when companies grow. They start taking on a lot of jobs. They think jobs don't take as long and they start not showing up and they're not accountable. Um, maybe you just don't know how to manage your calendar. Maybe you're, you're all over the place and you need an assistant, an office assistant, and you need to hire somebody to keep your calendar organized because you just say yes to everything. Or you didn't hire employees, you don't know who to hire, and you didn't plan ahead for that. So make sure that you, if you know you're gonna be growing and you're getting a lot of jobs, make sure you are proactive about finding guys to work for you because at some point, you're gonna to have to expand yourself from being on every job site to managing multiple job sites if you wanna scale this business. Uh, number four, your quality is not good. It means your work sucks. And your work sucks because you don't know what you're doing. So. And this type of business, this type of business is learned by doing. So if you wanna start an excavating company, you're probably not watching this bit video unless you have a background in construction. So I would say make sure you know what you're doing because if your quality's horrible, um, that will put you out of business before anything else. You can, be, you can have the nicest equipment in the world, but if you don't know how to use it, you're gonna be out of business. So, and then outside of that, number four, we're going to the next thing here is you need to legal up. You need to make sure you have an LLC. You have an LLC because things happen. People get injured and something happens in your business and um, you may be negligent, not knowing that you're negligent and 
potentially an LLC allows those potential lawsuits to not go into you personally, depending on the laws and regulations of your state. But an LLC is a completely separate entity from you. So if something happens in your business that goes really bad, your business can go down, but your personal assets that are separate from the business cannot be attacked. So this allows you to have asset protection when starting a business. Uh, you also need to buy insurance. I, like I said, I own an insurance agency. Check out Wexford Insurance. That's who we are. We work with a lot of construction companies, excavating companies. If I'm not in your state, um, I would be happy to review your policy and make sure you're connected with the right person uh, because this business is very important that you have the correct insurance because like I said, we deal with general contractors, home builders all day long and they require specific types of insurance. And if you don't have it, they won't even let you on a job site and you won't even know. So making sure that you are connected with a correct insurance agency that has history in contracting is the utmost importance because your insurance will make or break your contracting business. Make sure that you have a contract if you're working with uh, a home builder or a, a lot of times a general contractor or home builder is gonna have you sign a subcontractor agreement. But if you're working with directly with the home builder, make sure that you have a contract that they sign and you sign so it holds you guys both accountable because if it's not in writing, it doesn't exist. It's hearsay. So make sure that you have something in writing when you're doing those jobs directly with home owners. Number five, you need to commit. If you believe in what you're doing and you have understand what I've outlaid here and you think that you can be successful in this business. Um, I've talked to so many people that when they just started their business, they decided to finally commit to starting and then seeing them grow over the years has been just awesome to watch. And some of these people, they were so scared for so long and then they finally did it and then they're like, man, I should have done it sooner. I should have started this business sooner. I could have been so much further along. I don't know why I was so scared to start this business. Now you should be um, very preparing and you should be prepared to start a business, but at some point you gotta jump and you gotta commit. So if you got value out of today, hit like and subscribe. Thank you so much.